I'm going to reconnect the battery and do then this, uh, we're going to see if it fires. I can't wait. Let's do this. Yep. Okay, so if you saw the thumbnail, the title of the video, who knows what it's going to be yet. I haven't decided. Yeah. But the thumbnail should have something. Probably right. like a really cool... It could be, uh, it could be something that. like that. Yeah, right? Can't um, see that yet. Yeah, so Dean is moving <laughs> from uh, his current tuning solution, which would be what? Well, basically it's uh, the dyno, jet, power vision stuff, you know, that, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, that so many people are using. Uh, you know, Wayland and Dino Jet themselves and everyone. So yeah, it's several tuners, yeah. lots of tuners, I think. Yeah, moving mm -hmm. away from that platform, which is all of this stuff here. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah well, we got all kinds of boxes here. We got you know, the Power Vision. We yeah. got the uh, the Wide Band CX. This allows you to see your AFRs on the Power Vision. Okay. We got the Launch Control. Okay. Programming cables. Okay. And this is just some old school auto tune from back in the uh, Rotax days and so on. Okay, you just gathered all your data. Yeah. Stuff, man. Yeah. So I mean, three different systems here that yeah. uh, uh, sooner or later is going to be up for grabs for somebody, uh, along with uh, maybe actual computer thing goes in the car. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I've been using this platform and gone through a couple of different tuners, and uh, along with that, probably about. Uh, Oh, easily 15, 20 tunes between the two tuners. Yeah. Um, and, you know, basically, I, you know, the car either does this and well and that bad or this well and that bad. Basically, it's either got power but no drivability or it's got drivability and no power. Okay. Um, and that's been the, uh, the problem. And, and part of it is, uh, you know, compared to the duners and desert people and stuff, you know, I, I ride in a little more... Uh, various terrains, you know, go from below sea level all the way to nine, ten thousand feet sometimes. Yeah. And I think that throws a wrench in the works. Yeah. But, uh, but even just doing you run into some problems here and there. Yeah, yeah. Just doing, you know, trying to get max power, then it doesn't want to idle, let's go with that, whatever, you know. So uh, the, the car's got easily easily a hundred runs on the dyno yeah. between all the tunes that I've had with all the Dino Jet stuff. Oh, all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's take a look at that. Right on. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. The, let's see what the let's see what the jewelry looks like. <laughs> hey, because that's some, that's it's catchy, pretty nice. So. It is. It's so, it's really nice and it's really really simple. So. All right. Um, so this is the stuff. This is the Motec. And this is their 130 series. There's other brands out there, Amtron, different ones. Yeah. And you know, I don't have experience with those, and I don't have experience with this one yet. But we're going to put it in. Yeah. But uh, it's pretty much plug and play. Uh, basically, this would be a box that replaces your factory ECU. Yeah. This is your your CAN bus harnesses, I guess. Yeah. And so, take out your factory ECU, you plug your existing harnesses into here. This is more or less like an adapter box that goes into your new ECU. It also helps things communicate because you got your igniters, you got your O2 sensor coming in, um, you got different accessories like belt temp, all, all sorts of things you can control because you have basically an unlocked open ECU. Nice. You can do all kinds of things with um, I'm just going to start off with a fresh set, set of uh, injectors. No, way, no issues, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean this, this set right here uh, including my stalkers, uh, this is probably my fifth set of injectors. Oh wow! Yeah, so I'm just gonna start fresh with some 1300s here, and starting fresh with a new four-bar map sensor. Okay. Can amps have two map sensors? Basically, reads in and out, whatever. But uh, you know, your card only ha only has one. So being this is standalone ECU, it's a wide band. We only need one, so I'm gonna read from one. So we don't have to replace both of them. Uh, and this is kind of a nice nifty little thing here. Mm -hmm. This is actually a General Motors part right here. I like this. Yes. So a lot of your newer cars, uh, even the pickups and so on, 
flex fuel. So how does your truck know if you're running 87 octane or E85 when you have a flex fuel truck? It's got one of these doodads on here. This fuel runs here. through. This reads the alcohol content, changes your tune based upon the alcohol content. Very nice. So imagine, you know, everybody's testing for E85. It's got to be exactly E85 or at least E84 or whatever when you do your testing uh, because that's what your tune calls for. Well, since this is a constantly adjusting thing here, I can go half and half, 91, 85, you know, as, as it runs through and I keep putting 85 in it, it's eventually gonna be all E85. What if I pick up some E82 or E90 that comes out of the pump? This will adjust for it and it'll maximize performance based upon what it reads. So, nice. nice little doodad that we're gonna add on there. Oh yeah, good. Okay. Okay, what kind of, what's, what's our technique here? Technique is to unplug the injectors and unplug the uh, fuel line. No, man, I mean this catching your fuel thing. Oh. Just grab so, the Tupperware in there. Oh, one of your little. One little park pin thing. It actually worked out pretty good. Just set in there. No mess down here. Just a tiny bit of splash up here. I like that. Yeah, look at that. Cool. All right, so what are we doing now? Pulling the injectors out? We're gonna pull these old injectors out that are, I believe, 1050s. Okay. And we're gonna put 1300s in there. Not necessarily because we're gonna use that much more fuel, but we're gonna lower the duty cycle. Gotcha. Um, instead of, you know, for example, we're running an 80% duty cycle, we can run closer to 40 or 50. Um, it gives, gives the computer a little more tunability, a little more that it can, uh, make adjustments for so so less duty more fuel yeah. that's always good yeah <laughs> and, you know and the other thing is too is uh atomization yeah so mm -hmm. when you run a high pressure out that out that injector you know it's putting a ton of fuel out there and the, the fuel is no good at liquid state it's got to atomize and mix yeah. with the air so if you're going able to go with lower pressure and same amount of fuel um, we're hoping it's going to atomize better. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So get ready to yank this out right now. She's loose. Hopefully, I don't lose an injector below. Come on. This is. All right. So we'll swap these out on the rail and then slide it back in. Yep. We don't have to do the last one. I mean, you have to do it, but we don't have to do it on video, right? Yeah. The boss is here. What do you, what's Cut it out. We don't need any more of those injector stuff. <laughs> We're putting the injectors in. They're already on the fuel rail. Yeah. I put a little white grease on the uh, O-rings and the injectors where it goes into the plenum. Yeah. And that, that made it go in really nice. So, get that in. I have two screws that holds it in the lovely 30 Torx that Ken Amsel loves right yeah everywhere well it's kind of nice that at least it's the same one all over the place huh it's still yeah. different like a GM or it's a different size everywhere yeah can you imagine you know they put like a like an Allen wrench but it's a Torx you know so it's that little with that little leg on it like you're gonna do everything on this car with that little Allen wrench <laughs> oh yeah All right, well, we can't see much of this, so we're gonna assume that he's putting the injectors in as they should be. Yep, yep. And then I uh, will come back for the next. 
So now we're going to change out the map sensor. Uh, when you're tuning a factory ECU, yeah. uh, I believe stock, you know, I could be wrong on this, but the analogy is right. Stock is say a two bar, and then as you go into higher boost, you go to a three bar, and then even higher boost up to a four bar. And the reason why you do that is because you're still faking it out. The ECU can't see that high boost level, it's going to give you an over boost code and all that. So you go with a higher bar map sensor and makes it so the ECU sees the same reading as if it's a two bar, but you're pushing out way more boost. Um, that's my understanding of it. So um, I believe I had a three bar in there, Whoa. closed loop, uh, standalone ECU like a Motec. It'll use any of the, uh, the bars because mm -hmm. it's just going to read what it's reading. But I'm just starting off fresh with a four bar, put okay. that in there. Um, and basically it's just an automotive style map sensor. And again, on the factory uh, Can-Am, you've got two map sensors. You got one on the plenum uh, after the throttle body, and you got one just before the throttle body. Uh, with the standalone ECU, you only need the one, just like a car, you only need one. So, uh, gonna change that out, and then we're gonna be ready to start plugging in ECUs. Awesome. All right. So, I can't really get up in there, so, but we can take his word for it that he's plugging in the map sensor. Same All right. third. So it's almost time to install some jewelry. Yep. Some we're gonna, jewelry. We're going to disconnect the battery because we're going to be moving like 20 wires in one plug. And, yeah. You know, I do. Just to eliminate any chance of something. I got yeah. my brand new full throttle battery here. Oh, nice. Very nice. Starting off fresh with all my electronics, trying to, yeah. trying to be a good boy. <laughs> All right. So what do you guys do? You disconnect the positive or the negative? There's, negative. I've heard both ways. Yeah? I've heard both ways. If you disconnect just the negative, somehow they say it can still it come feed. back through. Yeah, it can still through. feed. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. It doesn't seem logical to me, but I've heard it. How about we disconnect them both? I mean, this is the, the golden moment, right? I mean, it is. this is why all the money was spent. I mean, not that there was so much yeah. money. I mean, So this is an early 2017 car. So no, no fancy ECU cover. Yeah. The fuse box is not here. Fuse box is up in the front. Yeah. And just two screws. And yeah. That one's not a screw. It's just a little hole there. And I'm gonna mark those. Just because maybe you can't flip them, I don't know. Might as well mark them. Yeah, a little hard. We're not doing the E85 sensor right now. Yeah, keeping it simple, getting it started, go from there. It's all plugged in already. Very nice. Here it comes. Big, big moment. We all left the Sandsport Super Show early for this. Okay, so if this goes in the same orientation, Yep. This would be one and that would be two. I can Let's tell see. you real quick because the pins face opposite. Yep. Looks like the same orientation to me. And there's different uh, guides in there. Yeah. The shapes of the guides are different. So. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it's only going to And go the metal pins way. are uh, opposite ends. Yeah. So I'll put the back one in first because the other one's going to lay over the top of it. Get oh. started. The magic is about to happen. Yep. Push it in as you lock it. There's one. Look, they fit. They actually fit. <laughs> they actually fit. Like they was made for it. That's weird. I think it was. Those two yeah. are locked. That's the claim. It was made for it. Here's the ECU. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I got this stuff going on. So the biggest thing I got going on here is I got an igniter. What's an igniter do? Couldn't tell you. I thought that's what the coil packs did. I'm guessing this is the distributor pretty much. Yep, that is what, that's what lights off the spark. Yeah, they told me this igniter will uh, uh, provide about four times the amount of power that I need so I can run many more ignitions on it. I don't know why I would, but yeah. apparently that's why. And then here's my Lambda. This is where we get our closed loop. Okay. This is my O2 sensor. 
which uh, now you can buy any AutoZone or parts store. I don't have the exact number for it, but I believe they said it's a There's GM. Some probably some stuff out there would tell you. Right there. Right there, yeah. And on the other side, too, flip it, quarter turn the other way. Well, this way? Yeah. I thought, oh, never mind. I saw dirt. Anyway. No, there's something written there. Okay. There Looks like go. it's scribed on there. Yeah, there's some stuff in there. Yeah. Some infos. So cool. supposedly, I'm going to plug this in. It can only go one way. That's what they say. So we got that plugged in. We got the new O2 sensor. We got the four bar map sensor. I changed the plugs. Um, man. Ready to go? Now, uh, these are not grounded off of here, obviously, because you're screwed into plastic, so there's no issue there. Yeah, nothing to ground. The grounds must be internal. Um, so there, there is one thing we didn't show you. There's an Ethernet port right here. Yeah. And this is where the tuning happens. That's where it happens. So the cool thing is, is if you've got a laptop or a desktop, the Ethernet port, you can run that over to it. And if you're on Wi-Fi, um, this will be live. Just like you're sitting at a dyno shop and they show it up on, on there. they got the guys sitting in the seat with the laptop and everything, doing everything. So with the program that this comes with, it'll be plugged into the laptop. The program will be up and running. It'll be on Wi-Fi. And uh, call up MoTeC. MoTeC logs in from the other side of the world. And he's seeing everything live. So he, he's actually being able to fine-tune it from the other side of the world while the car's sitting here island. He just tells me if I need to rev it up or anything like that. And then as I gain more knowledge, uh, pretty he'll, sure we he'll saw train some me. of that on uh, side by side blog visit with that recently. Yeah, they put the Motec on the YXZ, right? Yeah. And yeah. if you go back, if you go back in my in my history of sand railing and uh, duning and whatnot, I actually had uh, I don't know if anyone would be familiar with this. It's kind of they're still around actually, but that's yeah. uh, a Stinger, an ECU Stinger. Uh, they have like Mega Squirts or something like uh, that. E, uh, AEM. Yeah, AEM. They're still AEM. There. So AEM Stinger is what I ran on my sand rail. I actually tuned it myself with a yeah. laptop back in the day over months and months of tinkering with it. Yeah. And Dean has also done some of that with uh, a Rotax conversion on a Rhino. Yep. So yep. this is a different world for us, but back kind of kind of takes us back to where we were plugging laptops in and making things yeah. happen. It's actually going to simplify everything. I Absolutely. Mean, yeah. When you're trying to fake out the ECU and everything, you got to yeah. kind of be more or less a master tuner. Yeah. But when you're trying to get the ECU to do exactly what you're telling it, yeah. then you know you're basically you're shooting for AFRs, you're shooting for boost levels, you're yeah. shooting for timing. But like the, what I will say is this is not for like if you're gonna run this, right? Typically, if you're gonna run this, there's gonna be a, re a, big, a bigger reason it's gonna be bigger turbo would typically be right. why you would wanna do this. The other thing is that you're either gonna need someone that's gonna do the laptop for you, part, which which Dean is gonna have, Yep. or you're gonna have to be a master tuner because this is a different, well, this is tuning all the way. This is not, uh, not sticking someone's flash in it and running it. Right, well, but you do give your parameters of your vehicle, and it comes with a basic tune. No, no, I'm just saying, like, if you were to buy this raw on your own, oh, and you yeah. didn't have some kind of backup, you'd yeah. be on your own, which is where I was with my sound rail. Right. I had a uh, bass tune I could download. I had to make it run yeah. from there. And really, the only time you're going to run into that is if you're trying to, you know, buy a Motec used from somebody sure. that had it on a sand rail or sure, whatever sure. else. And now you're trying to start from scratch. But yeah. if you're buying this new, yeah, there's support it's going to sure. come. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, this... This M130, you'll see the M130s, M150s, whatnot on race cars, yep. on these uh, JDM vehicles, oh, yeah. whatnot, drifters, yep. everything else. Yep. It's the same thing. Yep. Same thing. Right. So I'm going to reconnect the battery and do then this, uh, yeah. we're going to see if it fires. I can't wait. Let's do this. Yep. Okay, so, yeah, battery's hooked up. Everything's hooked up here. I mean, it's pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty oh, yeah. simple. That's all hooked up. These are all batteries labeled. hooked up. And they're already hooked up where they need to be. So guess what happens now? So again, we're how much of that? We're, we're told it's not going to run right. It's not going to idle right. I have you. So that's kind of cool when that happens. I kind of like it. Yeah. But here we go. 
the big moment. I'm, I'm gonna just get in accessory mode, see how the dash lights up. Yeah, let it squirt yeah. some fuel into the system. Let's see if it looks any different. I don't know if it's gonna look any different or not. Here we go. Oh wow. I don't hear the fuel pump. I don't hear the fuel pump either. That's not ideal. Okay, so there is something going on with the fuel pump in that uh, had to run the relay. It's an 80 amp fuel pump in there, had to run the ground relay that Evo requires and everybody else requires for that big fuel pump. I don't know if I need to take that relay out. No. Okay. I got a failure message up here. Communication failure. Communication failure and no, uh, we did not hear the fuel pump run. Is everything plugged in? What's this cable that's that's not plugged in? Is that something else? Yeah. Oh, this one? No, this, is, uh, this is belt temp. I want to run oh, belt, belt temp. temp. Okay. Okay. Well, let's make sure all your plugs are solid. Communication failure. Uh, oh, two plugged in. Uh, did you plug in everything over back in here? Yeah, map tuner, all that. I mean, map tuner. Uh, <laughs> map sensor. Map sensor plugged in. Uh, this wire is plugged in. The missing wire is on the battery. Seems like I only. Seems like I had more than that. I don't see any loose wires. Yeah, I don't see anything with this. Don't look at that. <laughs> Get on my grounds. I don't see any loose wires over here. Is there a wire tucked in here that's hiding anywhere? Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. No. Well, We'll scan things over and see what we can find. Okay, so we tried a couple of things. We unplugged, plugged back in, swapped that cable end to end. Uh, let's see what happens, right? Yep. Does it do anything? I hear it. And no fuel pump. Let's look for uh, communication failure. Yep. Still got, we still have a communication failure. So if you know what that communication failure is, we won't see it during this, but still communicate or communicate. Uh, <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> Comment below, yeah. Let us know. Did you did you you pulled that one out back in? Yep. Yep. Hmm. Oh, yeah, well, well, well. Plug it 